Today I've got a very interesting tree here. This is a tree that I collected or actually uh, found by chance three years ago. We had some serious rain and floods and I was driving through the indigenous forest on a gravel road and on the side of the road the flash floods washed this guy out of some rocks and it was lying pretty much on the side of the road and I wasn't planning on, on taking any trees out of nature that day um, and I just thought if I don't take this tree then it's gonna it's gonna die in any way so I took it put it in a bag it was pretty much at the time it was completely bare rooted and I didn't have much much hope for it um, when I found this tree there was no growth none of these branches were here these little branches there were no shoots it was probably double the height so it was quite high uh, about a meter tall and I cut cut it there um, and then I planted it in this pot this is a fairly large pot well quite a big pot and I did that for a reason to just try and get a lot of uh, root growth as much as possible so I planted it in this big old cement pot and it's been growing in this pot for three years I planted it in a very nice free draining coarse soil with expanded clay a little bit of river sand some perlite and a nice free draining uh, substrate and um, you can see over time there's some nice sphagnum moss that's grown that's developed on top of this um, I, I weeded this before I started this video because uh, the weeds were growing about that high so it was embarrassing so so I haven't done anything to this tree for three years and it's just been standing like that um, I should have fertilized it but I never have uh, right now I did I put some of these uh, guano organic slow release uh, fertilizer on it and so it's a quite an interesting interesting tree um, it it was obviously growing in between two rocks or, or under a rock and then it may, made this like serious bend um, under the pressure of whatever was on top of it and where the rain had washed out then it grew out to that point and then it went to the sun eventually managed to get some sun and uh, went out that way so I don't have a clue what I'm going to do with this tree I don't want to make too much uh, of a long unnecessary video so I'm just going to wire all these branches or the, the couple of branches that's there and I was thinking of making a like a sort of a, a raft slash uh, forest uh, style so with this main branch uh, winding up like this I might cut it off over there and leave this like the apex or the highest point of the tree and then wire this sort of bend it that it moves with that branch as well as these small ones there's a whole bunch of new little uh, buds or branches coming out there's one two three um, there's four or five in the back here so I can let those grow out and eventually wire them all in um, I'm lucky to have this branch over here I can do something with it so from this point there's another little little shoot there so it's one two three uh, there's four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so in total there's eleven potential branches I can develop with this this main branch and um, create sort of a uh, like I said a, a semi raft raft style if you if you will or a um, or a you know like a a clump style sort of a mix between those styles so I'm gonna get wiring and shape shaping it and um, I'll take you through what I do I'm going to take you in for a close-up 
on the tree now so that you can see what it looks like. Okay, so this is a closer view. You can see some nice sphagnum moss got disturbed when I was weeding. So for scale, there's my hand. It's quite a nice thick, thick trunk like you can see there. And it, <laughs> it gives that gnarly bend down. Oh, I remember when I got this tree, there was a dead branch over here. Uh, a dead stick right up to there. So I cut that back. Um, I think I'm going to go in and clean that knob there, what's left of it. Um, with the knob cutters. And uh, give it a nice sealer. So there's those back branches that I can develop, do something with it. So this this is a, a, a cheese wood, if I haven't mentioned that, I don't think I have. It's an African cheese wood. In Afrikaans we call it a kassir. Uh, Pittosporum viridiflorum is its botanical name. And this is a really special tree. Um, they're not rare. Uh, by in they, it's, it's a very popular landscaping tree. And they grow all along the coast from the Western Cape all the way up to Mapumalanga. So it's, um, they spread quite far over South Africa. But it's, what is rare about them is the, the, the big trees, the big ones. You don't often see uh, trees 20 meters or 30 meters. 30 meters is pretty much its um, maximum reported height. Um, so this is what makes this tree really interesting. It's uh, in certain areas it's deciduous, and um, in our areas it's it's evergreen. It's not deciduous, so it's a deciduous and a and a evergreen tree in one. Um, and mostly it's a small shrub-like tree, uh, but in the indigenous forest, in its natural um, habitat where it gets high rainfall, a lot of water, this guy uh, will will grow up to 30 meters, but it's really rare to see them. And if you see it, it's, it's really a, a majestic looking tree. Um, they have a very big round canopy. They've got um, insane in nature, like insane uh, um, gnarled bends and contorted growth. Uh, really, really awesome trees. If you, I've only seen one like in my area in the indigenous forest, one really big one that's there on the 30 uh, adult tree that's around the 30 meter mark high. So, that's him. Over here, I've got two little branches, and there's some growth up here. Further up, some growth I can see there where I cut it. It's died down up to that point. So, just want to go in. I see it is dead up to that point. But I think I'm going to bring it down a little bit more. I'm not going to prune or cut too much. I'm just going to try and wire and shape. Because um, what's nice about them, if I had to prune prune this branch over there, it will bud out um, above the, the leaf, that leaf there, the leaf stem. And so yeah, let me get wiring and I'll get back to you now. Okay, sorry. Before I start wiring, there's some pruning that I want to do. And I just want to put that on camera. Or future reference. So there's little dead sticks that I'll cut off. Uh, behind this branch there's a little a little branch or a little shoot and I'm going to take out over there. In the middle there where it bends in the middle there where it bends there's short branch at the base and take that out another little one 
just like that. I'm going to leave this front one as well as this front one. I will leave that little one. I'll leave this one. So I'll leave all these branches and I'll let them grow. I'll let them grow. So before I wire, I just want to show you my other cheese wood that I've got that I've had for uh, 12 years. All right, so here's my 12 year old cheese wood. And I did quite a heavy prune and wire on this about a month ago. It was full of foliage. I've done it about <laughs> two months too early, but these these trees are really forgiving, and I'm keeping it in a like in a hot house effect. Um, so it's a really warm, humid area where I'm putting it, and the result. Of that is really good um, for after having pruned it I'll take you in close and you can see hopefully you can see there's buds starting to push over there right on the top over there over there pretty much every every branch is starting to push new growth and they they out of that uh, little bud there there'll be three three to four little branches um, so I can select uh, quite a few the black spots you're seeing that's a sealer that I that I put on some new wounds and old wounds um, it's <laughs> looking pretty messy with my backyard wiring job here but um, it's gonna do the trick and so now I use this opportunity to see where the buds come out and I'll do a little bit of more bending. So I'll bend branches up, left, right to manipulate where my future, manipulate them for where my future branches should go in, in which direction. So what I'm aiming for with this tree is if you look at it from the side it's leaning a little bit too backwards it's a really like a 2d sort of tree so this branch i'm bringing forward i've angled those shoots to come in full the front as well as this one full the, uh, this area as well as this branch to fill that area and in the back i'd like to with this branch i'd like to fill in the back section and get a overall a nice big round canopy like they would would look in nature so a very impressive well in my opinion at least a very impressive uh, root ball here or nabari um, i've worked at it over the years uh, did some root pruning you can see old uh, pruning scars there as well as over here can see the live vein running in below this with this dead wood that's been baked by the sun and getting character there I really like that that's quite a quite an ollie looking root ball there and um, it's developing nicely So in December, this will be full of foliage, hopefully, and um, growing really strong. By then, I'd re remove all the wire, and um, I'll do an update on this tree. Um, doesn't look like much now, but it's going to look really beautiful. I'm I'm pretty sure of it. Um, come December, so keep a look out for for this cheese wood. So I really just did a quick wiring job over here. Uh, this is what I'll call the, the front of the tree. And the first branch I just bent, sort of countering this main, main trunk of the first bend, countering it a little bit towards us and then upward. 
and um, then this little branch just a little bit forward there's a new little shoot coming out there so that can grow and I can can get some ramification over time from here on forward and upwards and then the one furthest to the right I just wired also brought it with a with a bit of a, a bend to the to the front and the one in the back I pushed back a little bit to the right with a nice bend and then twisting around again and then up um, because I've been working on that other tree for 50, uh, for 12 years I know how these trees react so when there's new shoots like that shoot showing upwards um, if you want a few shoots then I can bend it that it's horizontal so now I'll have one shoot for going forward one coming to the front and one going to the back uh, and and maybe even one going to the to the top um, and then I can select in which direction then, then I can choose you know do directional um, shaping or pruning like I did with that tree over there um, so so in this case I might just leave leave that branch like that and then hope for hope for that sort of branching that I just explained and and then the shorter ones that I won't even wire those little branches in the back I'm not doing anything to them I'm leaving them I want them to grow the same height as this and become actual branches to get more the more branches developing um, on this tree so that's pretty much what I'm doing to this tree now <laughs> it doesn't look like anything but it's going to grow I'm going to feed it heavily I'm going to plant it in better soil uh, or new soil fresh soil the soil's not too bad um, I had a look in there uh, it's got a serious amount of roots um, it's been this one's been in a cold uh, shady dark area so it's responding um, in a in a deciduous way so looking at the top at the apex um, that this is probably a good apex there's one two three thin branches uh, splitting each into well two of them are splitting into two Uh, this branch is dead. Papa, Papa, look at my mama. Girl. Okay, so that uh, one little branch there was dead. Uh, just cut it off and I sealed it. Um, I'm just going to leave everything the way it is and try and promote some serious growth over uh, spring that's on its way and summer. And um, just like I said, feed it heavily. Put it in sun, give it a lot of water, and um, just try and get as much vigor out of this thing that I that I possibly can. Um, the last I cut that dead stub off the top there, the dieback. The last leaves are all the way up there, and I'm thinking I just want it not much higher than that. Um, so I'm not going to bring it all the way down. There's a little branch. There's a little branch. And I think I'm going to take it down just another 50. Yeah, or maybe another 5 centimeters or 2 inches. About half an inch above that little branch there. And then I'll go in with a bit of bitumen tree seal. This stuff seriously good. Not just for bonsai, any any tree. It's UV resistant. Completely seals the wound. And a little goes a long way. Especially with bonsai. So, I'm 
this is pretty much all I'm going to do to this little <laughs> little spider, spider looking, spidery looking tree. But I think there's, there's potential in this tree. Definitely, definitely a lot of potential. Sorry for the poor camera skills. You know, one might even, I might even, if I see just one day, I might even just cut it off right over there and make it, like I said, sort of a raft forest vibe. I'm not not sure. I haven't decided on that. On that, um, this is like three styles in one. It's almost like a literati raft clump. Um, forest thing <laughs> it's a weird thing but I love this tree and I'm just stoked that I that I could save it and I was able to save it because it just definitely wouldn't have lived after it was was washed out of the rocks and that's where we at Thank you for watching.